Malachi chapter number 3 and verse number 10. It reads, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out of blessing. And there shall not be room enough to receive it. Church, I'm teaching from the life-changing, life-building, and life-blessing series. Actually, I'm starting a series today. And it's a it's going to be a mini-series. It's only going to be about three or four lessons. But it is entitled, the series is entitled, Why Should We Tithe? Why should we tithe? T-I-T-H-E. Why should we tithe? This series is coming to you because God spoke to my heart that it was time for us to hear some teaching on tithing. Some of you, when we've gone through new members class, you've heard me teach on it. And a lot of you who've been members of the church for a while, you've heard teaching on it. And those of you who've been Christians for many years, you've heard teaching on it. But God has appointed this time for us to hear some teaching on tithing. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, here's the thing. The word tithe means tenth. The word itself means tenth. And like I told you earlier when we were taking up the offering, God sets the tithe. But he gives you the opportunity to set the offering. See, it's God's part, and it's your part. Somebody say, God set the tithe. Set the tithe. Yeah, he, already, it's not, he doesn't ask you. You know, I know some people say, Pastor, I'm building up my faith, and I'm tithing now 20%. No, you're not. Because a tithe means 10%. You might, be, you might be tithing 10, which is a 10, and then you might be given an extra 10%. I say, praise the Lord. I ain't mad at you. Keep, you know, praise the Lord. But, but technically, that's not a... 20% tithe. Alright. The key question for this series is in the title. And that is, why should we tithe? Somebody say, good question. I mean, that's a, it's a good question. Why should we tithe? And this teaching is going to be so important, uh, Sister Pam, and the CD ministry, because when people have these questions, I'm going to, you'll be able to send them right to this series. Now, the, let me give you the answer up front, and then we're going to, over the course of this series, we're going to chase the answer. There are three main reasons we tithe. Three main reasons. I'm going to give you the three, and we're only going to talk about one today. The three main reasons we tithe are as follows. We tithe for God. That's number one. Second reason, we tithe for ourselves. And third reason, we tithe for others. That's it. We tithe for God, we tithe for ourselves, and then we tithe for others. And today, we're just going to talk about uh, lesson number one today is tithing for God. We're just talking about why we tithe for God. Somebody say, tithing for God. Tithing for God. All right, here we go. Point number one, here we go. We should tithe to honor God. Point number one for today is we should tithe to honor God. Our scripture is found under that point in Proverbs chapter number 3. We should tithe to honor God. Now, when you first read this scripture, and, and if you're like me, you've been a Christian a while, you know this scripture, Proverbs 3 and 5, you can almost say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all, what? Thine heart, and lean not into your own understanding. How many of y'all familiar with that scripture? A lot of Christians know that scripture. But what you probably didn't know is that relates to the tithe. It's right in the same. See, when you want to rightly divide the word, you always look at the context. And the context, actually, of that scripture is talking about, listen to what he said. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Let me translate that to you. Trust in the Lord with your heart and don't trust in your head. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's saying your head is going to say, well, why I got to do this? Well, that doesn't make sense. How many of you all know that faith doesn't make sense? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? 
I said, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Faith doesn't make sense. Faith makes a difference. Faith doesn't make sense. You know, well, I'll say it another way. Faith doesn't make sense. Faith is obedience. Yeah, there you go. Faith doesn't make sense. Listen, if faith, if faith made sense, you wouldn't need faith. Oh, thank you for the amen. I, got this, I knew that, that amen went right there. If faith made sense, you wouldn't need faith. If, listen, if, if when God tells you to do something, it makes sense to your mind and you understand it all right then, you wouldn't need faith. In fact, you wouldn't need God. You would just do it. See, God tells you to do something that things that don't make sense to your mind. So then what you have to do is you're going to have to just trust God and take him at his word. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Listen, God is saying to you, trust me with the 10% and I'm going to bless the, I'm going to bless the 90 that you got left. You know, and you sit up there with, you know, God, that's cool, but you know what, I think I can handle the hundred. You know, I mean, that's how we think it. You know, I'll just take the whole hundred. Let me, let me handle it. I, I got this. God said, no, 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 no. You give me the ten. I'm giving you the hundred, and you give me ten back. Now, you know, it doesn't make sense. I'll put it to you like this. How many of you all have ever talked to some of your unsaved friends? I don't know why you have the unsaved friends. But anyway, unsaved associates. Maybe unsaved family members. And and they found out you tithe or you tell them you be tithing. And and what did they say? Well, oh, you crazy, you crazy. That don't make sense. Why y'all in the they're giving they're like giving 10%? And then, and you know what they're gonna say? And you giving 10% to that pastor? See, that's why, see, it doesn't make sense to them, and they don't even understand it. You're not giving 10% to the pastor. You giving it to God. Can I get an amen? Yeah. You're giving it to God through the high priest, Jesus Christ. Are y'all with me? Yes. All right, here we go. So it says, trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to your own understanding. Somebody say, he's talking about tithing. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Now, does it talk about more than just tithing? Yes, but it includes tithing. And he's basically saying everything thing that you're doing, you got to acknowledge to do it God's way. So actually, all any money that you get, any increase that you get, every time you tithe, you know what you're doing? You're acknowledging God. You're saying, God, I, I recognize it came from you. It, I recognize it came from I mean, just flat across the board. Every increase. People always have a lot of questions about tithe, but it's not that complicated. I said every increase. You got something you didn't have it yesterday? Take 10% off the top, give it to God. Some people ask me questions, they say, Pastor, what about, can you pay once a month? Sure you can, if you can trust yourself to make sure it's set aside. But the best way to do it is take it off the top, give it right away to God, get it out your pocket, because the longer you hold on to it, the greater the temptation is. I'm just being honest. Because you know, if you hold on to it, and an emergency comes up, that's a lot of temptation. All of a sudden, the light bill got to be paid. See, when you don't, when you know it's God's, you give it right away to God, so that it's not even an issue. So that's why I think a lot of people struggle. They're like, "Well, I just can't tithe. I can't afford to tithe." Though no, you can't afford not to tithe, yes. and you really, you can't tithe because it's not your money. You know, it's kind of like what God was telling me this morning when we had Sunday school. People sit there and they talk about what they what they can and can't do with their body. But when you're a Christian and you come to understand what the scripture says, you don't really have to have a lot of discussion because it's not your body. Did you all hear what I said? That just settles the whole issue with me about, see, I'm not concerned about, I don't have to go out there and march around uh, 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 abortion clinics. I don't have to get upset with people having abortions and stuff like that. Because the truth of the matter is, any woman that has an abortion is going to have to answer to God. Thank God he's merciful. And thank God he's forgiving. But the truth of the matter is, if you are a born-again believer, that's not your body. So don't, get, don't come with all that worldly nonsense talk about choice. You have a choice, but you also have consequences of your choice. You have the choices and God has the consequences. 
and he told you what to choose. But he told you it's not your body because once you're born again, you're bought with a price. So glorify God in your spirit and your body, which belong to the Lord. Let's just give God some praise, somebody. Amen. That was for somebody. I don't know who it was for, but that was, that was for somebody today. So look, let's read along. In, in, in all thy ways, verse 6, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Stop trying to use human reasoning. Human reasoning is directly contrary to God's wisdom. Amen. The Bible says, you know what it says about human reasoning? What did it say, minister? It says, and every high thing that exalts itself, it says, casting down imagination. You know what that translates as? Human reasoning. Human arguments and human reasoning. But I think, see, that's where you messed up. You started thinking. See, as it relates to anything different from what God said. Once God said it, it ain't about what you think. Amen. Oh, that's all right. You don't have to say amen. I'm preaching good anyhow. I'm saying amen to myself. Because once God said it, you have to cast down imaginations and every high thing, and it really ain't a high thing, you just getting high and polluted, that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And you have to bring into captivity every thought into obedience to the obedience of Christ. Somebody say every thought. Every thought. Somebody say every way. every way. And he shall direct my path. Now watch this. It says, verse 8, it says, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bone. Ooh, Lord Jesus, when you start obeying, ooh, wait a minute now. Hold on now. Wait a minute now. Watch out now. If you tie, it's going to be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. I never saw that before. I just had a rainbow right then. If you tithe, there is a health benefit. Did y'all just see that? There's a health benefit. There's not only a material benefit, there's a physical benefit. Now, if you missed what I'm talking about, God showed me that there's four levels of prosperity. There's spiritual, then there's mental, then there's what? Physical and then material. Physical is higher than material because if you sit and got all the money in the world, you still messed up. No matter if you sit, and, you know, and, 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 and you got it, like like that movie we were watching last night, Spider Man. The man had all the money in the world, but he needed he needed to be healed. All the money in the world couldn't help him. He needed he he was dying. He had a disease, and he was willing to get. He said, "How much do you want me to pay you, Spider Man? I give you all this money. I just need to be healed." In other words, physical well-being trumps material well-being. Because if you are you got incurable cancer and you're a billionaire, you still messed up. Amen. If you tie, listen to what it said, it shall be health unto your navel and marrow to your bones. There's a healing benefit of tithing. Look at that. Verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Somebody say substance. I'm glad he said substance there. Because in the old covenant, when you tithe, your substance was flock and fruit. But in the new covenant, it's a different type of substance. It's money and credit, right? But guess what? You know, checks and cash, right? Somebody still say it's still substance. On the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Somebody say all. All, all means what? All. all. Having none left over. So notice he's saying you got to trust and you got to honor and you honor with your substance. And then he says the first fruit, which is what I said earlier, which is you 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 take it out of the gross and off the top. I'm gonna say that again because this is very important. Somebody say out of the gross, out of the gross. say off the, top. off the top. See, when you get a check for five thousand dollars. Uh, well, yeah, you get a check for $5,000 for the month of September. I'm just giving you an example. Now, your take-home pay is, let's say, $3,500. Just, just to give an example. If you tithe on the $3,500, that's not a true tithe. You see? Because what you really got was $5,000. You said, well, Pastor, but I didn't get that. Oh, yeah, you did. That's your salary, the gross salary for that month. Now, some of it didn't get directly to your hand because it went, some of it got withheld for taxes, some of it got withheld for Social Security, 
Some of it went to medical payments or whatever, but you got the benefit of all of it. You actually really did get 5000 and you tithe on the five, and you paid 500 to the Lord. Let's give God some praise if you understand what I'm talking about.